Hello everyone, my name is Joshita Santol and I'll be speaking on the importance of the early detection of breast cancer and its global effects. But before I get started, I wanted to introduce myself. So I am a rising senior at Brookfield East High School in Wisconsin. Some things that I'm involved in are my school's MedLife chapter, HOSA, Red Cross, and I'm a speech captain. I've written a research paper on polycystic ovarian syndrome biomarkers, and I've presented on mammogram access for early detection. As for the work I've done on this issue so far, I've presented on the importance of accessibility of mammograms to diagnose breast cancer early in order to prevent complications. Some notable organizations I've presented to and worked with are the insurance company Optum Insight, the Wisconsin Women's Health Foundation, and I've worked personally with the president and board of the CDC-run Wisconsin Well Women's Program to advocate for policy changes in adding mammograms to our state. Let's first look at the current state of breast cancer on a national scale. In the U.S. alone, there were 3,886,000 women living with cancer in just 2020. Though there's been an uptick in technology and research towards the cause, there's also a shortage of facilities, which only worsened during the pandemic. When everyone was on lockdown, screening appointments were canceled. So after the pandemic was over and the country returned to normal, everyone started scheduling appointments again. And this has led to centers being overwhelmed and not being able to accommodate everyone. Mammogram production was also cut until now, so there isn't enough technology to accommodate the growing numbers. It has also been recently reported that there's a chemotherapy drug shortage, and many hospitals are forced to temporarily withdraw treatment for their patients. Essential drugs like carboplatin and cisplatin are needed to continue chemotherapy regimens, and without them, the patient's health and progress is severely at risk. Though the situation seems dire, there's always hope. Looking at the big picture, a woman's risk of getting diagnosed has gone from every 1 in 11 women to 1 in 8 because of medical developments. The key is to ensure that every woman has access to these developments in diagnosis and treatment to improve and save their quality of life, bringing the numbers down and the survival rates up. Now, if we take a look at this from a much broader perspective, the seriousness of this issue is highlighted even further because 2.3 million women were diagnosed in 2020 alone. In many countries, a lack of resources isn't the only obstacle. An example of this is Belgium had the most cases in 2022 and Barbados had the most deaths, which oncologists say is due to lifestyle, predispositions to earlier monarch, and low screening numbers. And this is why early detection is so important. The availability is for women to get screened, and the earlier they can find and treat the cancer, their quality of life will be improved. If we take a look at the survival rates at different stages of diagnosis, there's a clear sign that the earlier someone is diagnosed, the better their chances are, because it prevents the cancer from taking over the whole body. To look at early diagnosis from a global standpoint, the situation is different in each region. In North and South America, the pandemic has led to a decline in screening, so more women are diagnosed at later stages, putting themselves in danger. If we take a look at Africa, the numbers are significantly lower, as only 16% of women have gotten screened, so 80% of women get diagnosed at the last stage, which is very dangerous. And there are many other factors that contribute to this, such as stigma, a lack of resources and education, and cost of treatment. Similarly, in Asia, only 13 Asian countries have actually established mammogram screening programs, and this has led to such a state where almost half of the cases in 2020 were from Asia. But there's also evidence of screening making a difference. The national program Breast Screen Australia provides free mammograms for women above the age of 40, even if they display no signs of cancer. And this has led to a sharp decline in mortality rates, saving many lives. Similar to that, 66% of women in the European Union get regular mammograms in the past 10 years, which has led to 34% of breast cancer related deaths being prevented. Unfortunately, there are many barriers in the way. A ubiquitous issue is women being underinsured and not being able to afford chemo, medications, checkups, and even the mammogram needed to diagnose. The cost of the first mammogram alone ranges from 150 to 300 USD in the US and in different areas, and mammograms for further examination cost even more. For many women, they're forced to make the difficult choice between groceries for their family or a potentially life-saving service. It's a tough choice to make, and it puts many women in a tough spot where they have to choose the former. This financial pressure is what deters many women away from treatment, even if they want it. 
Another factor is the lack of accessibility. We've already go gone over how there's a lack of mammograms and spaces due to the pandemic. And additionally, the recommended age for mammograms is 40 or above, which puts many women under that age at risk because earlier onset breast cancer is known to be much more aggressive. Unfortunately, screening is much more expensive and less accessible due to this, which leads to them getting diagnosed later where the cancer has become more dangerous and apparent. In addition to this, a general lack of information and awareness contributes to this issue. There's a lot of stigma surrounding breast cancer, especially in areas like sub-Saharan Africa, where women have noticed signs of cancer in their body early on, but they hid them due to not knowing what it was and shame. Many women were afraid that their family would disown them, their husbands would leave them, and they would die immediately, so they didn't seek out any help. And even when they finally did, they were perceived negatively, only adding fuel to the fire. And all of these barriers need to be overcome to mitigate the effects of breast cancer on women and our society as a whole. A common misconception is that breast cancer only affects those diagnosed with it, but it can actually affect the global economy because it's the most expensive type of cancer. In the U.S. alone, it costs $26.2 billion for services and globally can lead to a $92 trillion USD loss for the world's economy annually. To look at this from an individual perspective, though, cancer puts many parts of a person's life at risk. 28% of women in the U.S. with breast cancer lose their job after being diagnosed, and the same applies to 20% of women in Asia and 40% in Latin America. To add to this, the diagnosis comes with many expenses, which can be seen in the statistics here. Because of this, many women avoided going in for treatment until they had to, which only led to higher expenses such as surgeries and therapies. Another part of this issue that isn't addressed as frequently, but should be, is the stigma surrounding this. As previously mentioned, breast cancer has been found to have the highest level of stigma compared to all gynecological diseases due to women hiding their condition because of a shame and a lack of security and understanding. So what can we do to combat this problem? 1. Raise awareness in your community. Talk to the women in your life about mammograms and honor survivor stories. Then, advocate for change in your city by advocating for policies that make screening and treatment more available and for awareness. And finally, donate to women's health organizations that will use the money to make an impact. These are my citations. I would like to thank the Global Health Leaders Conference for giving me the opportunity to bring this issue to light. And I would also like to thank the Wisconsin Well Women's Program for supporting my advocacy. Thank you so much for listening and feel free to reach out with any questions. Mm.